going on kids? Uh, today we're going to take a look at some different types of spark plugs, different styles of plugs. We're also going to remove one of the plugs from this Del Sol and take a look at the actual spark itself and not only look at the pattern of kind of how it fires on the plug, but using a digital storage oscilloscope, we're going to time how long it takes for that spark to actually jump from the electrode down to the ground. So to remove the plugs, we're going to need to use some special tools. And in our toolboxes, there are two special sockets up top here in their own foam cutout. And they're, they look like regular deep well sockets, except you've got a, a hex back here, so you can use a, a wrench if you need to. But the big thing is, if you look down inside of the socket, there's a little rubber grommet in there. So that way, when you go to actually remove the spark plug itself, so it's just a regular copper NGK plug, um, the rubber grommet that's in there, when we put the plug in, will actually hold it in place. You're going to see when we pull the plugs on these Del Sol, or on the Del Sol, that these plugs are actually a couple of inches down in the cylinder head. And if you were to just unscrew them with a regular socket and try and remove it, the plug would stay in the hole and the socket would just come out. And then the plug would be down there, you have to get a magnet or a long pair of pliers or something. But these special spark plug sockets are going to grab onto the top so that when you remove the tool, the plug comes with. So under the Del Sol, we've got our four plugs running right across the top. This is a dual overhead cam motor, so we've got our intake cam back here, our exhaust cam on this side with our exhaust manifold, and the plugs are going to be running right down the middle in between those two cams. So the plug wires, we can just pull this out, and we're going to use that special socket that has our, our uh, rubber grommet in there, and we'll put this down and make sure it seats on the spark plug. There's a couple different sizes of spark plugs, really two main sizes. Um, it's pretty easy to tell if it's slopping around, but this is on the plug. And I'm very carefully going to crack this thing loose and make sure I keep the extension as straight as I possibly can. A lot of times you're dealing with a steel spark plug going into an aluminum head. And aluminum is much softer than steel, so if uh, you over tighten or try and put this plug in a little bit crooked, you can destroy the threads on the cylinder head, and that's a bad day for everybody involved. All right, so the plug came out, and it stayed in my socket, which is exactly what I was looking for. And we can look at the plug itself, and this is going to kind of give us a window into what's going on inside the motor. We can look at this plug and, and see if it's all carboned up, if it's black, if it's wet with fuel, if the spark's not firing, if it's all carboned up, we're too rich. Um, if it's really, really uh, like white and burnt looking, um, it's too lean. So we can, I'll put a picture up there and you can kind of see what these different plug, um, uh, what the plugs will look like in, under different conditions. The other thing to pay attention to when you remove the plug is there's a little crush washer on here. Some of these plugs have a one-time use crush washer, so if you remove the plug, you are supposed to replace the plug because once this has been crushed, it's crushed and you need to replace it. We can also see our part number on here. We can uh, inspect the plug to look for any burn marks up here. So we got our porcelain outside and our steel core, or steel part up here, and there's a copper core that runs through it. And this is just a regular old copper plug. Uh, we'll look at some other different plugs a little bit later, but we've talked about it in class where we've got the electrode that's there in the middle, and then this bit of ground strap that comes around. So if this is a positive fire plug, it's gonna go, the spark's gonna jump from the middle out to the ground. So with our plug removed, I've gone onto all data and I've printed off the sheet for the spark plug uh, inspections. And it tells us exactly what to look for to, to see if this plug has been fouled out or if there's an issue with our motor and if the plugs need to be replaced. It also gives you some ideas of what may cause the issue if you do have a plug that has been fouled out. But we're also going to take a look at this, this uh, other side where it talks about the spark plug gap. And there's a certain gap or distance that we need between the electrode in the middle and then this ground strap on the outside. If the gap is too far, the spark is going to be really, really weak because it has to jump a huge distance. And then it may not ignite all of our fuel all the way. If the gap is squeezed down too tight, the spark is going to jump very, very quickly. It'll be a very, very strong spark. Uh, but again, it might not burn all of the fuel because the spark itself is not long enough and it's not burning for a long enough time. And again, we'll time how long it takes for that spark plug to burn uh, in here in a second with the digital storage oscilloscope. 
Uh, so the gap itself on this plug, we're looking for 1.1 millimeters or 0 0.043 of an inch. And the tool we're gonna use is one of these little coins. And you can get these, uh, this one's from O'Reilly, but you can get them from Napa, AutoZone, Amazon, wherever. Uh, they cost a dollar or two. When I was in high school, I had one of these on my keychain, so I always kind of had it with me whenever I was working on a car. So if we look at the outside of this coin, you can see that as it rotates, the ridge on the outside gets fatter. And that's gonna be the space between the ground and the electrode on our plug. So if we put the spark plug on the thin side and then spin this up, we can see that I'm pretty close to 0 0.043. Each of these tick marks is, uh, what's that gonna be, a thousandth of an inch. So I'm pretty close right there. If I was a little bit too tight on the gap, I would then kind of work this thing up and over. But you're gonna see in a bit when I show you all of these plugs that sometimes gap uh, spark plugs need to be pre-gapped, so you're not gonna to have to worry about this. Uh, we can use this gapping tool because this is a straight copper plug and the electrode on there is pretty beefy. But you're gonna see there's some iridium plugs and some platinum plugs that are considered fine wire. And so the electrode is super, super tiny. And if we were to try and jam this coin in there, we just snap off the electrode. Let's go ahead and uh, put a new one of these plugs back in the car because we destroyed that crush washer. All right, so we're gonna pretend that this is a new plug. And we can see on our fact sheet here, our, uh, our inspection sheet, that it tells us, depending on which model year vehicle we have, we're gonna need a different plug. And NGK and Denso are two popular manufacturers of spark plugs. And it tells us that we need to use an NGK model ZFR6F11. ZR, I'm sorry, ZFR6F11. So we have the correct plug right here. We know that it's gapped correctly because I just checked the gap. And we can go ahead and put this back in. The other thing that we need to look at is they suggest that we use a small amount of anises around the thread so that this thing doesn't get locked up inside the motor. Uh, fasten it finger tight, so that's to make sure you don't cross thread it. And then torque to 18 newton meters or 13 pound feet. So we're going to use a, an inch pound torque wrench, so it's, it's quite small. So you take that pound feet and you multiply it by 12. So back with our anises and our plug, so I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on my plug, and then as I spin this down into the cylinder head, that little bit of anise is gonna kinda spin and smear itself around. You wanna be careful you don't actually put any anise on the electrode itself, uh, but then we can go ahead and run this down into the motor. So it goes in nice and easy by hand, and then I've got my torque wrench on deck here, and this is an inch pound torque wrench. So 12 times 13 is 156, so we're set to 150, we're past the 150 line, and then we're at the six. And then we're gonna very, very carefully and slowly start tightening this, tightening this down and watching for this head to click. Again, this is kind of scary because we're putting steel, uh, a steel threaded plug into an aluminum cylinder head. So if you over torque this, it's gonna be a bad day. There we go, it clicked. Notice I'm not putting a ton of stress on this, a ton of pressure, and as soon as it clicks, I stop. We can then take our plug wire and put this back down and we wanna hear it and feel it click as it locks back onto the top of that plug. We should be good to go. So on the bench, I've got a series of different spark plugs and each one of these plugs are specifically designed for a certain style of motor. Uh, the shape of the combustion chamber makes a difference if it's GDI, um, if it's a turbocharged motor, makes a difference on, on what different plugs you run because there's actually different heat ranges. So some plugs will burn hotter than others and if you run too hot of a spark plug, it can actually cause knock or, or pre-ignition, detonation, whatever you wanna call it. So we'll start off with the simple one. Uh, this is a regular copper NGK plug. This is probably out of a lawnmower or something. Um, and we already kind of looked at the same style plug because this is what we have in the Civic because it's just a naturally aspirated, you know, four cylinder motor, nothing, nothing super fancy. Again, we've got our part number on there. We've got a brand, this is another NGK plug. We can see there's just a single ground strap and then a pretty decent sized electrode. Now I know you have nothing to reference that to, so let's take a look at something with a significantly smaller electrode. This is a fine wire plug, and instead of this one being copper core, this one is, or uh, copper electrode, this one is a platinum plug. 
And also, you see in the marketing, this is, well, it's not just marketing, it's true. This is a double platinum plug. So what that means is the electrode, as we can see, is much, much finer, and it's also coated in platinum. But what makes this a double platinum plug is there is a very, very small laser-welded coin of platinum on the bottom. So you use these double platinum plugs if you have a waste spark ignition system. Because remember, in traditional fire, we've got our spark coming from our positive, so the electrode itself, down to the ground, but half of your cylinders are going to fire in negative fire. So it's going to go from the ground up to the electrode. So you want to make sure you have platinum to platinum when the spark is jumping. Uh, when sparks jump, they take the path of least resistance, right? They're gonna take whichever path to ground fights them the least. So if you have a ground strap, it's gonna try and go to the coldest part of the ground strap, uh, which brings us to something like this, where we have multiple ground straps. So we've got a giant electrode there in the middle, and now we've got different grounds for that electricity to jump to. Um, what this does to the flame front, as we saw in that slow motion video of a cylinder, um, I, I'm not convinced that this is the, the best way to go, but manufacturers are smarter than I am, engineers are smarter than I am, and if this is what they say to use, that's what we're supposed to use. We've also got some other more traditional looking plugs with a single ground strap and then we've got another little laser welded bit on the end and this is a ruthenium spark plug. What manufacturer requires these plugs I'm not sure. I just kind of went to Napa and grabbed one of every different plug I could find but you can see that this one looks a little bit different and this is again a fine wire plug. So imagine trying to take that coin and shoving it in there to try and split that gap. You need to break off that little laser welded piece or you're going to bend the electrode. And so this is another example of one that comes pre-gapped. So these um, platinum plugs, iridium plugs, uh, ruthidium plugs, they're all going to be pre-gapped for you. This was a new one to me. I'd never seen this before. I have no idea what cars use this, but look at the ground on that. It's crazy. So really the, the main area for your flame to come out from when the spark fires is going to be in this direction right here. And some people will actually index spark plugs so that the opening from the ground uh, is facing towards the, the top of the piston depending on where your uh, spark plug is located. It's called spark plug indexing if you've ever watched like drag racing videos or race car videos talk about indexing plugs. So they're talking about the position of the plug so that the ground strap doesn't block the flame front as the gas expands and tries to push your piston back down. But let's take a look at the spark itself. Uh, I'll try and catch it on my camera um, and then I'll also hook it up with a scope so we can time how long it takes for that spark to jump. So this is a spark tester and it looks like a regular spark plug except there's a clip that we can clip onto a ground and then there's a hole in the bottom that we can see our spark jump. And the gap on this thing is obviously gigantic. So we're gonna place the plug wire right up on the top. Gonna jam this thing in here if we can. And then we're going to find something metal on the chassis that we can ground to. And then I'm gonna try and point the camera right in the middle so we can see the spark jumping around. And at full speed, you can hear the engine misfire because I had to remove one of the plug wires from the plug so that cylinder wasn't firing. There were only three cylinders going. All right, so I think this video is running a bit long, so I've decided to spare you from the scope data uh, portion of the video. Uh, I will make another video here next week or so taking a look at the information coming from the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor. Those are the two sensors that tell the computer when to fire the spark. So the, the computer knows when we're on the, on the intake stroke, when we're on the exhaust stroke, and where the piston is in relation to um, each of those strokes. Uh, 
So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. Otherwise, be good, and I will see you next time.